Hello folks, this is Nathan and uh, we're looking at another question and the question is, should everyone be educated at home? Right, what, what are we talking about when uh, we uh, ask that question? We're talking about the locale of education. Um, where is the education taking place? Uh, so we're talking about um, what's sometimes called homeschooling. And in Europe, I think it's more popular to call it home education. Uh, the locale of education. So clearly, uh, atheists, Baptists even, Presbyterians, Buddhists, and even humanists of a general hue, educate at home. That that's their chosen locale for education. And this says nothing about the education's religious underpinnings. Uh, or the quality of that education, I'm sure that quality varies, all right? But when we use the word should, we're in the realm of morals. We're asking, are we morally ob obliged to educate at home? So let's start at the beginning. This is a Christian show, if you hadn't guessed. So let's look at what the Bible says, because it's the same as God speaking to you in person. So what does God's word say about what is right, what is normal in the field of education? It's locale and other. It, it, does, it, does the word of God say anything about this that is binding? Well, yes, anything and everything it says about it is binding. Now, before we do that, it's interesting to consider the opinion of the learned John Taylor Gatto, a distinguished humanist and two-time New York school teacher of the year. He once mused that future generations will look back at our generations and the generations that preceded us and marvel at our own times that parents would, without thinking, without a second thought, turn their offspring, their precious children, over to uh, educators who... They did not know. And uh, teaching them who knows what. But it is the natural reflex to trust the God of the system and the God of our system ever since Hegel and before ha is the state. The state is the God walking on earth. So it's always blasphemy not to trust the um, not to trust the state. Anyway, we live in very strange times, which seems normal for us. But increasingly for many, the abnormality of it all is more and more evident. And more and more people are wondering, goodness me, why did we do this for so long? Be they Christian or not? All right. So what is the norm? The norm is what our creator God has said it is. That's the norm. Now, Abraham was entrusted in Genesis 18 with the divine secret and God confided in him what would happen to his nephew Lot in the city of Sodom. And he said this, he said, For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So, so God was saying, can I trust this guy? To put it in the vernacular. Well, he says, of course I should trust this guy. What was the qualification for this trust as outlined in this verse? He was going to educate his children. Okay, so uh, and how was he to educate them? He was to command his children. So education has uh, this note of command, but it's not just... Thus saith me, Abraham, thus saith the Father. No, the command was to come from God's word, of course. And what was the object of the education? This is the first time that education is mentioned in the Bible, as far as I know. And it has that tone of command. It has that tone of justice and judgment. So the norm for education is that it comes from the father and the mother, comes from the parents, and it is an education into the law of God that justice might be done and justice might be served, you might say, that is in judgment. 
at that time when God met with Abraham. He was at the gate of his tent, at the door of his tent, as it were, uh, meaning he was at the place of judgment where he would decide a case uh, as a uh, uh, a prince, uh, a civil magistrate, you might say. So, very different already, totally different. So God's ideas, and God doesn't change, so we can't say, oh, that was then, this is now. This is the norm for Christians. Just because we have iPhones and something called democracy doesn't change this one little bit. So they are like Proverbs 31 men. The sons are to be equipped, and the daughters as well, to a lesser extent, to be able to sit and judge the men are to sit and judge at the gates, judge just judgment, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or justice. So, and in that case, what was the locale of education? Well, Abraham was a herdsman. He was a stockman. He bought and sold and he had a lot of gold. So uh, the education um, was going to happen in wherever Abraham was, I suppose. Sometimes in the field, at other times... Uh, in the tents, at other times at the gate, in the place of judgment. So the locale wasn't strictly speaking the home, um, but um, there was a portion of that that would inevitably happen in the home. Now, um, it's interesting also to consider, since we're in Genesis, um, that Rebecca and Rachel were discovered by Eliezer of Damascus, who brought Rebecca home to Isaac, and by Jacob, when he found Rachel, they were both working outside the home. So it's not as if all of women's education, women's um, training, is to necessarily occur in the house. Since their work would, um, in part, like the Proverbs 31 woman, take place outside the house in the family business. All right. Another, that was the first instance of education in the Bible. First, therefore, formative for whatever follows. But the keynote in education is perhaps the Shema, what's called the Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one God. And uh, it says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So parents teaching children. That's the norm. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Okay, that's the home education. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down and when thou risest up. So there's the idea that wherever the father is or the mother is with the children, then they are to teach them. In the home, yes, certainly. But also wherever they are outside, when they see a certain uh, uh, instance outside the home and Proverbs is a great example of this teaching taking place. The, the idea is that a father is teaching his son. And some of that teaching is domestic in its orientation and some is very much in the city. All right. So the locale is in the home and outside the home. But very definitely, again, the parents, particularly the father, as with Abram, the parents have the responsibility to teach their children. It seems very foreign to us if we're not already home educating, but do we want to do God's will? Are we interested in what his opinion is? God's opinion is law for us, of course. So the, again, the norm is to be geared to knowing the law of God and loving God by the obedience of faith. And I would say as, a, as an aside that how can we love God not knowing his law? Because after all, God said, Jesus Christ said, uh, he who loves me will obey my commandments. Well, if we're not taught by our father and mother what his commandments are, then are we able, are we equipped then to love him? Okay. And the idea is that God's justice is passed on to the next generation and the generation after that. So that adds uh, another component to it. All right. Lots more to say. As I said, Proverbs, that's a huge um, it's well of uh, material. And it's at each turn, it's an example of a father and, the, and the teaching the son. Although there are different sections and subsections in um, the book of Proverbs. Okay. 
Another key point, and this is the sort of last um, scriptural allusion that I'll make, is the tribe of Levi. An entire one-twelfth of the Israelites were dedicated, they were devoted, uh, primarily, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 10, to teaching the law of God. Plus some other, other duties as well, obviously, but... Uh, Furthermore, Levi received nine-tenths of the tithe. The rest would go to the temple to be equipped for this purpose, which was, again, primarily to teach the law of God. So there is emphatically then, with the tribe of Levi, uh, a necessary outside-the-home component to education. So should all education happen in the home? Absolutely not. And furthermore, we can surmise that this was for advanced topics. It wasn't that the Levites were to wholesale take over the duty of teaching from the parents. No, that's already set in stone, that that was the parents' responsibility for. But for those who would specialise and just for more difficult cases, that's where the, that's why the Levites were, um, that, that, that's, that's, that's their responsibility. Okay. So, absolutely not. You are not obligated by God to only teach in the locale of home, although very clearly that is probably the primary place that that would take place. I know I'm being a little bit niggly there, but it is true. But again, you are absolutely obliged to teach the law of God. Can't get around it if we believe in Scripture, if we believe, um, like Orthodox Christians, that uh, we're given the whole word of God and every uh, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable, etc., etc. So we are obliged to know the law of God ourselves, to love it and to teach it and pass it on to our children and our children's children. And when I say we, uh, parents of children, that they would be just in their own lives and be able to judge just judgment as our Lord commands in, I think, John 7. And is not... The responsibility, the the prime, the first responsibility, according to Christ, to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness, and righteousness is cognate with justice. So it's not just our heart; it's all the world around us. So that's an absolute must. But we don't find ourselves floating in space. We are in the United Kingdom or in probably some other Western country, but. Should we? Ought we? Is there a moral obligation to educate in a home context today in the UK? All right. Now, there are risks. There are tremendous risks of not putting your child in the state school. Very, very grave risks, which you should consider uh, uh, once, twice and three times before you decide to not school them or pull them out. Okay. You run the risk, a heavy risk, of your children not ending up a Maoist or any sort of communist at all. Think about that for a second. That chills me to my bones. They may end up with their bodies intact, with all their re reproductive organs, which is not that not terribly fashionable at the moment. And perhaps worst of all, they run the risk of not learning to distinguish between good and evil. Of learning, pardon me, learning to distinguish between good and evil. They might have a moral compass which points true north, or if you're being biblical, true east. <laughs> so it's a very dangerous business to even consider, to even think about pulling your children out of state schools. I know it's dangerous. I can think of people right now who have had the knock on the door from the social services for even voicing that opinion in the UK today. Okay. So, if you have done your due diligence, looked at the curriculum that your children would be taught, and of course, every parent does this, I'm sure, and you've assessed thoroughly and uh, satisfied yourself in all good conscience that, conscience that this school is uh, loves the law of God already, its teachers, and um, in its curriculum, uh, passes on that love of God's law, that knowledge of God's law. 
And whenever, whenever the teachers sit down, whenever they stand up, whenever they walk around at home, wherever they may be, they're they're always you know pointing out different things about the beauty of uh, God's uh, word, and it does mean the whole of God's word, but specifically the word used in those verses, I believe, is Torah. So the emphasis is always on the law aspect, and of course, all of God's word is law for us. But anyway, if you can satisfy yourself of that, then have at it. How about it? And of course, I'm being a bit silly because it's not going to happen. In fact, if you didn't already know it, you're not going to find a Bible college that even views the Word of God as a norm. I've been to one. I've been to an evangelical one. <laughs> They're disaster areas. The Bible is something to be uh, probed and uh, you take of it what you want and... Uh, no, it's not a norm to be followed, certainly. Never mind the aspect of knowing God's law, teaching God's law, loving God's law. That is out the window. But if, however, the school, whatever it may call itself, Church of England, Church of Scotland, We Free, whatever it may be, if they teach in history, in politics, in woodwork, without any reference to the Lord God Almighty. In history, how can you teach history without mentioning the Lord of history? What a foolishness. If they deny God at every point by omission, or if at every point they take God's norms and turn them on the head, then to educate a child in that context is at the best apostasy from the faith, undeniably so. It's just that this has become the norm. It's happened over a number of years, but the, the, the norm is not normal. If we norm it by the norming norm, which is the Word of God, it may shock you, it may offend you, but it's not defensible biblically if we believe the Bible. So since such schools evidently do not exist, you are constrained practically to educate your children at home in order to fulfill your Lord's command in your life. Now, I know there are practical con considerations and I'm not here to give you practical advice since uh, I don't have no children, um, but I know it's all difficult and so on, but these got us our Lord and we are hemmed in. We have uh, no option but to obey him or apostas, you know, or rebel against him. So, in the realm of education, there isn't a third option of um, putting him in hold. You know, um, but as with the Levites, what about the advanced and specialised um, education? Well, of course, universities are one of the institutions today that are falling apart and simply are not. Um, they're so politicised, as with health and welfare and uh, the corporations as well, that are not interested in um, the, the market. But they're so far removed from their task that um, the universities are very, very dangerous places. More dangerous than any other, really, uh, apart from maybe social services. But um, from... These days, if you want to learn a language, you certainly don't need to go to university. There are dozens of other better alternatives. If you want to learn the liberal arts, if you want to actually learn and master a subject, um, most of that is done by books. But of course, if you want to be a certified engineer, if you want to be a state licensed uh, doctor, uh, which is less prestige than it used to, of course, if you want to do something uh, that requires, absolutely requires, uh, being state licensed uh, in a state university, then, you know, you just got to weigh the best, your options up and pick the best one. But there is no biblical injunction which says, you know, you can't be educated outside the home. Um, but you better have done a, a good job uh, before that. Okay. 
So, in answer to the question that was posed, a very weak no, you don't have to educate at home, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, but a very strong yes in today's world, up to a certain point, up to a certain age, up to a certain degree of specialisation. But today, there's practically, in I mean, I don't know, 90% of uh, the things you might be interested in, probably an option which doesn't involve state certification in, 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 a, in, a, in a university. And um, I can think of one friend who went to Korea, learned Korean in order to be um, practice Chinese uh, Chinese medicine. They bypassed the system. I think I'm presuming they have an apprentice system for uh, Chinese medicine. I don't know. But uh, okay, well, um, the, the 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 necessaries are in any form of education for the believer and for anybody who was created by God is that God's law and justice be kept, the love, the, law, uh, the love of God through the keeping of the, uh, uh, the, the law of Christ is paramount, and it's paramount that the education be done primarily by the father and the mother. Those are our constraints. That's the way of liberty. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you very much.